Uh, for the opener only, as it turns out, Don Callis joined the commentary crew. He was there because he's known Kenny Omega forever, and they're both from Winnipeg, so he's got that connection. But they also plug Callis' connections, and he's still currently working for Impact Wrestling. So that's intriguing. And for one match, it was fine. He did a very, very good job. This isn't a knock on Callis, but it's not like AEW needed another commentator. They have got a three-man booth full-time. Taz told us some stuff. Jericho is there every time. So they have lots of guys in the mic. They didn't need one more, but for one match, it worked out well. Uh, the other thing about this from a production standpoint that was going on throughout the night is they got the big screen at Daly's Place behind the ramp. So the hard cam was looking right at it. And they had some kind of wacky graphic going on there with flashing lights flying around. And I spent the entire show thinking fans were throwing garbage into the ring and realizing it was only graphics on the background screen. That was distracting. Less stuff on the background screen, please. Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page in the World Title Eliminator Tournament Final. So I don't know if they're letting more people into Daly's Place these days or if they're just miking it better, but this is the best crowd reaction they've had, like, then the whole pandemic. Well, I hope say that this was... I hope it's the latter. <laughs> They're just making it better. Well, no. They had a thousand people in the building. So okay. I think this was more than they ever had. All right. But, yes. I mean, I thought that the first half of the show, the crowd was great. But actually, it was right around that Hikaru Shida match. They kind of got tired. And that was actually what I was told from people that were there. Yeah. And it was a very long show. And they got tired. And it kind of hurt the matches at the end. Although it didn't hurt the match as much watching them. But if this would have been a crowd, if this if they would have had, you know, what, uh, 10,000 people in the building, this would be one of the greatest pay-per-views of all time. But even with 1,000 people, and even Tony Khan said this, this felt like a pay-per-view from before the pandemic. I think he said, yeah. when we were in our prime. Mm. So Omega and Paige, they had a hell of a wrestling match. The, the, the best way to summarize this is just... While they had a great wrestling match, you could also tell they were there to have a great opener wrestling match and not a great show stealing or great main event wrestling match. Like, they had a great match that very easily could have been a lot greater, if that makes any sense. So, it went back and forth the whole way. There's not a lot of heel babyface shenanigans. There was not an extended heat segment. Just two guys doing wrestling moves and having them all look cool. There was actually one point where Kenny fucked something up. He went for the You Can't Escape, the rolling fireman's carry into a springboard off the ropes. And he fucked it up, and rather than, like, panic and jump up and try to save it, he just laid there and, like, sold his knee. Because he's smart, and he knows what to do. And when shit happens, you just roll with it, and you don't, uh, you know, you don't panic and uh, expose things. So, about 20 minutes in, this had been a good wrestling match, and then there's, like, uh, there's the powerbomb on the ramp, and then the powerbomb in the ring... And then they have a strike exchange, and I think Kenny hit a J-Driller for two. And that kicked off like the hottest 60 seconds of big moves I've seen all year. The Dead Eye gets two. That was really the peak of the match. Like two minutes later, Kenny's fighting for the one-winged angel. He'd been fighting for it the entire match, not gotten it. And the first time he gets it, boom, finish over. Kenny Omega wins and is your next challenger for whoever wins the main event. A very, very good opener. I thought this match was fantastic. I thought this was... Uh... Kenny Omega, New Japan-style match. Hangman looked great. I think that everybody was expecting that Kenny Omega was going to win, but I also think that everybody was expecting that Kenny Omega was going to turn on Hangman Page afterwards. And he did not. And I don't know where they're going, but the storyline is that Hangman Page was trying to get back into the world title picture, which he has not been in since he lost to Chris Jericho a year ago. Mm -hmm. And in his own interview, he said, if I don't win this match, all I've got is this bourbon. Mm. Because, in fact, he lost his two best friends. Yes. He lost his tag team partner. Correct. And now he was beaten by his tag team partner. So, in yep. fact, he has nothing. Yeah. And the story, clearly, is all about the hangman and the young bucks getting back together again at some point. And they want nothing to do with this guy. He has been shunned. And what I think is going to happen, what makes sense to me, is that down the road, this Kenny Omega character, who to me is absolutely a heel. Yes. But he worked as a babyface during this match. He certainly did, yes. And he came out and he was friendly with the Young Bucks later. I don't know if maybe... There's a lot of ways you can go, but I think ultimately... 
Kenny Omega's going to turn, and he's going to be destroying the Hangman, and the Young Bucks are going to make the save for the Hangman. And you're going to turn Kenny Omega and get Hangman and the Young Bucks back together all in one angle. That's where I think they're going. You could even do it where Kenny Omega joins FTR. Kenny Omega screws the Young Bucks. FTR wins the titles back. That's Kenny's heel turn. Hangman comes out. They're destroying him, and the Young Bucks make the save. There's a lot of ways you can go, but I think that's where they're going. But that's down the road. I thought Mm -hmm. this was a great step in this long-term story. In the short term for Omega, think about how big of a douche he's been just calling himself a single star and Hangman Page merely a tag team wrestler for the past yes. couple of months. Now he's beaten him, and he beat him fair and square with a wrestling move. There was zero shenanigans, clean as a sheet, and he's going to be an even bigger douche about it. You just know. So I did yes. like also for the finish where he's got him up on his shoulders and he's reaching up to try to get his head down for the one-winged angel, and Page is fighting it off. But Kenny got him. Yes. He got a hold of his head, and he hit the move, and that was the end of that. Yes, Love this it's, match. It's one of those things that, it, I mean, uh, uh, it it sounds so simple when you say it here on a podcast, if you weren't watching the show. When you actually watch it, it is so effective, making him struggle to hit that move before he finally gets it. And then it's, when he, once he gets it, good night. That's the match. If you love these video clips, head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click Join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes, over 300 at current count, full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Lance Storm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.